Hey there, welcome back to Mini Urban Farm, a channel about gardening and homesteading in the suburb. This is our November garden tour. Now, if you're not familiar with where I am, we are located in Central Florida and it is hurricane season at the same time that it is fall gardening season, which is why it's really, really windy. So I apologize for any noise. Um, I do have the microphone here in front of me instead of on top of the camera where it usually is. And we're gonna try to do this as best as possible. One of the reasons I wanted to do this now is because we have a hurricane, a category one hurricane slash tropical storm coming straight at us tomorrow, um, late tonight, early tomorrow morning. So before everything potentially gets ripped up and thrown around the garden, I wanted to show you guys how much progress we have had this month since our last garden tour. Things have been growing so, so much. Now, by the time that you see this video, the tropical storm slash hurricane would have already passed, um, but we're going out of the country this week coming up, um, which is next week. So you guys will be seeing this video after the hurricane is gone. Hopefully I will have an update on how it has been going after that. Now you can see in this bed over here, um, it has grown quite a bit, not as much as I would have liked. This is salad greens and some carrots on this end. I do have to come back and thin the carrots, um, but we do have tons of growth. Um, this is, I wanna say maybe these are like 12 inches or so from the soil. Um, I do have this, thickly um, sewn in here. So I will come back and thin this out, but they are doing pretty well without a ton of light. Um, and so these salad greens over here have not gotten as big as the ones in the other beds. We have some kale that's actually doing um, okay. And then a few other little kale. We have had some issues with leaf miners this season and I keep adding in my, um, my neem oil to the soil. So, so far it hasn't gotten too far out of hand. We have some mizuna over here, um, some arugula. Actually my arugula has not grown as much as I would have liked, but we are using it for baby salad greens, so I can't complain too much. And then I do have another salad green that I can't exactly remember the name. It's a um, an Asian salad green, but it has a nice mustardy kind of flavor, not as um, not as pungent as the other mustard I have growing, which I'll show you guys in a minute. I will pop the name here on the screen. Um, I actually really like this one as well. And then you can see my Brussels sprouts over there have been doing okay too. I think there's two plants in there that I will come back and thin, but I wanted to give them a chance to see you know which one grows the best and so far it looks like this one right here is the the biggest and then this one back here has not had that much growth so i'll probably end up snipping the back one and leaving this one this one also looks like it has less leaf miner damage and i'll come back in here and do another weekly application of neem oil now the compost pile has been getting along pretty well um, it looks like we should have compost for next season i have been adding oops um, i have been adding a whole bunch of compost in here you can see sometimes this happens where like things start sprouting and growing but i just come in here and mix it up um so far everything looks like it's breaking down pretty well and i just need to add in a little bit more nitrogen to the soil this one looks like it has a lot more moisture in it and a little bit more um more nitrogen so in this bin i'll probably add a little bit more nitrogen just to match it up, but we should have a good quality compost for spring season. All right guys, so you can see it is getting pretty windy here. Um, the gusts of wind today are supposed to be in like the 40s. Um, my carrots are going crazy over here. You can see these carrots are growing significantly better than the ones in the other bin. Um, I think they're actually the same variety, but they're just getting a little bit more light. Again, I need to thin these, um, but in the past I've grown them where I don't thin them and or I thin them very little and they still do pretty well. So I can't complain. And then I have my butternut squash. You can see these are flowering. I actually am seeing these for the first time. So that right there is a female flower. You can see the little bulge. <laughs> I'm trying to get it to stay still. So we have the flower and then right beneath the flower, this part here, that's the, um, that's the butternut squash. So that's a female flower. And then this one over here, that one also is a female flower. Ideally, we would have some female flowers and some male flowers on the plants, although I'm not seeing any male flowers, which means that these ones are not gonna get pollinated um, because they don't have any other flowering plants so far. These are doing the best. Unfortunately, those will not make it as fruits, um, as vegetables on these plants because they're not gonna be pollinated. But if I had a, a male flower, I would simply take it and just rub it over here um, on the inside part of the flower there um, just so that you know it 
pollinates everything and it ensures that we get a harvest. Now my little herb garden on this side has been doing really well since I removed some of the watering. You can see parsley is nice and green. Um, we have some Swiss chard here that has actually been doing pretty well. I can't complain about this one. And then some lemon balm that just kind of made its way from over there somewhere. Um, I have some oregano hidden here. I've actually been taking this um, and I'll show you guys the, the greenhouse because I've taken this and just you know had a few projects we can put in the food forest as well as some other herbs. Um, and so we have a whole bunch of parsley and we have, let me see what else in here, um, tomatoes. So I actually ended up planting out two of my cherry tomatoes in that space one here one here because this area does get a little bit more sun um, than this like herb garden on this side <laughs> um, and then we have one little tomato back here in the corner which is actually not doing too bad either now those are my grape tomatoes that i planted from store um, from store tomatoes and i think one or two of them are actually my yellow cherry tomato. Um, I don't remember which is which and I didn't mark them so I guess we will see. I just kind of tucked them in where I could find some space and then my Japanese red mustard plant is going insane over here. Um, you can tell the leaves are just massive. I mean this is my hand and that's like not even a third of one leaf. All right and I have been harvesting this. I love the flavor of this but not everyone in my family loves the flavor of this so I have to use this in moderation and then you can see my my lemon balm um, doing really well over here. It just continues to kind of like spread itself. You can see these vines just, you know, spreading themselves everywhere. Um, I have more butternut squash. This one is a little bit more, um, a little bit more yellow and a little smaller. I have been trying to trellis them. You can see it's kind of getting intertwined here, um, but I will come back up and prop this up. Oh, and you know what? Here we go, perfect. I will try to get this out from underneath the fence um, and I will use this male flower. You can tell it's a male flower because it doesn't have anything like the little fruit on it. So I will use this male flower to pollinate those ones over there if they ever stop moving around. My goodness, it is absolutely insane here today. Um, so I'll remember to do that after we are done. Another little butternut squash and I have a cherry tomato here. I believe that's a red one. Um, I do have some kale that's doing pretty well here. As you can tell, I've been harvesting it quite a bit. I am trying to harvest the bottom leaves um, more this season. That way it grows vertically and my goal is to leave them as a perennial for next season. Um, these beans, I'm not really sure. They haven't really taken off that well. I'm, I'm not quite sure what's going on. I haven't really done some research that I need to do on it, um, but they have been producing quite a bit. I've harvested just as many green beans from there as from over here. Um, and then this whole thing is a row of green beans. Now, after the last hurricane, our green bean patch was looking a little bit um, thin. So I came back and I planted some more and they just completely took off. I mean, I have been harvesting green beans from this every couple days. Um, you can see I have so many little green beans and flowers. My last green bean harvest, I'll put a picture of it on the screen here, was yesterday and that was the third harvest in a week and they all look just like that. So this has definitely been giving me tons and tons of green beans. We have some yellow beans on the other side, but these are jade bush beans and they have just taken off completely. Now we have another flower here, but this is um, not a vegetable flower. This is a black cherry sunflower, I believe. Um, so some of the other ones, I've just kind of like propped them up here. This one doesn't seem to be wobbling too much. Um, although I may just take one of these little elastic, not elastic, um, Velcro band things and tie it up to the, the trellis. You can see it is wobbling a little bit. And then I have um, some more cherry tomatoes. This one isn't growing as well as the other ones next to it. These are doing really, really well. I'm really hoping that the storm does not take these down. Um, before the storm comes, I probably will add another application of neem oil. Um, and then maybe if I can just take some twine and tie them to the trellis to prevent them from wobbling so much. Um, we do have like these green beans just toppling over the side here. You can see, I mean, it is just filled with flowers even though I continuously get green beans out of them. And then we have some little zinnias. Look how pretty those are. I have a few of these tucked up in the garden. I have one here and I have another one 
on that end over there and they're just the prettiest little things i actually also have some other little yellow um orange <laughs> zinnias over here this one has been here for quite a while so it's missing a petal or two but look how pretty that is this these little zinnias and we have a whole bunch of them i am really excited because it's my first time growing flowers successfully you guys so definitely can't wait to see more of those pop up all right so moving on we have some parsley tucked up in here this is actually from last season and i just left it um, it's doing really really well nice and bright and green and another sunflower this one is really tall you can see i did just take this one and kind of tie it to the trellis um, but this one has multiple blooms on it just getting ready you can see one bloom right there and then we have another bloom on the side there um, that's the same kind of sunflower so i cannot wait to see when these bloom um, they're supposed to be really really pretty and then just my wall of green beans um, you can see we do have tons of baby green beans i left them to get actually pretty big um, i don't want to pick them when they're this small i like leaving them to get a little bit bigger because they do get quite larger and then i come in here and then just pick them all at once but i always like leaving the next round so in a few days i can come back and harvest um, a nice round of big ones again right so i've been doing that i've been harvesting every couple of days you can see we have quite a bit of them quite a few of them and i harvested yesterday so these ones i'll probably leave for another few days and then they'll be ready to harvest again um these are the same i i think that maybe something cross-pollinated or maybe there was a seed in there that actually was a pole bean because they have just trellised themselves over like eight feet tall here and i've been harvesting off of the back of the trellis you can see we do have some green beans like on the trellis and these just keep climbing up and up so i'm really not sure how those ended up in this mix um but yeah and we have one on the ground that just kind of fell off or maybe i left it from harvesting yesterday or something so i'll add that into our freezer bag of green beans at this point and over here in our left bed or our right bed depending on where you're looking um back here i have another brussels sprout this one is doing pretty well i already thinned that one so it has gotten quite a bit larger since i um, since i planted it you can see how much they're moving it is crazy out here you guys i know i already said that but it really is um, i planted a little cosmo up in here those are the same cosmos um, as like little pink ones that i had a couple weeks ago flowering i'll pop a picture of that on the screen as well they're really cute um, i actually harvested those ones the ones that like were flowering from these cosmo plants and i put them inside and they lasted in a vase um like two weeks so definitely great for you know arrangements and stuff like that i have um some broccoli which is doing really really well all of this has grown a ton since i planted it i will have to probably come through and thin it um, but the same thing i just wanted to give it a chance to see like which ones were doing well and they're they're all pretty much doing well at this point so i can't complain and then i have some robot tomatoes over here these ones have been in the ground for a few weeks and you can see all of the new growth that they have had on them um if you're wondering like what this mulch stuff is i actually went and thinned my pomegranates from the food forest and i kind of just left these in here as some like caterpillar and slug deterrent um, and then these like little pine bark things they're actually not um, pine bark i had some sugar cane cuttings that i had you know just thinned my sugarcane and harvested and so i chopped these up and put them down as mulch um, just around the base so that cutworms couldn't get to it because that is actually something that i've struggled with a lot in the past i was going to stake these up with these stakes over here um, which i use every season um, however since there is a tropical storm slash hurricane coming um, i will wait until after that basically i just take these and i do the florida weave with them um, in between these little holes um, and the one goes on each corner they have like these little stake things here on the bottom so and milo again crying to come out there you go all right and so the last thing i want to show you guys is over here um, i have some projects i'm working on uh, the first of which is my rosemary cuttings so we have started working on the food forest um, quite a bit actually and i need some rosemary um, to go underneath some of these fruit trees and plants in the fruit tree guilds so because i have these two giant rosemary bushes in the front of the house i took some cuttings and i just tried to propagate them um, i've had really good success this way i also actually took some and put it over here um, in a glass of water. I've also had a lot of success 
growing the stems, um, growing the roots like this. So I will see which way it does better. Um, these ones have less browning on them, so we shall see about that. But then I also have these pomegranate um, cuttings that I took from thinning my pomegranate tree because pomegranates generally grow in like a bush and I'm trying to train it to grow as a tree. So I pruned it and I took some cuttings. These are about maybe three eighths of an inch or so um, and stuck them in here. Soil's nice and moist because I have this in like this um, bottom watering pan thing. This does not have drainage holes. Those do have drainage holes. So I'm trying to, you know, cover it and let the, um, the humidity rise and just keep this soil moist for all of the cuttings in here. And then I have some oregano in there that I did the same thing with and some parsley. Um, I cut the, the foliage off the parsley just so it would grow um, from, you know, from the roots. And so you can see we are having some new growth um, on these parsley plants already. And that will be also for the food forest. The oregano wasn't looking so hot at first. You can see like it is turning brown a little bit, but it did start propping itself back up. So I'm hoping that the roots take the other one, the same thing here, like this one, is doing okay um, so time will tell if those ones will take or not and then this whole space is empty because i actually took a whole bunch of herbs that i had here um, if you guys remember my previous garden tours this little area is like my little station for you know, my waiting station for the food forest um, slash i don't know what to do with these plants but a whole bunch of these plants i had here i took over to the food forest so definitely trying to clear out some of this area now i'm really hoping that the garden doesn't get too much damage because it is in full swing right now. I mean, it is absolutely amazing the amount of food that we're getting out of these plants. And it's just been a couple of weeks um, really since it took off. So I've had the garden now planted for about a month, give or take. Um, and we have been getting so much food. Um, I'm going to come in here and just take this little flower that I found, this little male flower, and try to pollinate the female ones over there. And that pretty much wraps it up for our garden tour. Wish us luck with the tropical storm slash hurricane. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.